Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. 24 hours after being busted by the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. We have also accepted Mr. Ferguson's resignation. Police Commissioner Brian Ferguson has opted to step down. It is a story we first brought you last night at 11. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Ferguson was cited and had his truck towed after sheriff's deputies say they discovered him and a known prostitute on the city's west side in his truck. Mar McDonald live at Detroit Police Headquarters. Margaret Ferguson had been the chair of the commission. That's right, Devin. And tonight, the Board of Police Commissioners addressed the entire Brian Ferguson situation right off the bat. Let me show you what has happened over the last 24 hours. Ferguson was sighted yesterday morning around 7 a.m. near Schoolcraft in Sorrento when undercover deputies saw him and a known prostitute inside his truck engaging in what appeared to be a sex act. Deputies say Ferguson identified himself as a police commissioner and asked if they might help him out. They didn't. Instead, Ferguson was ticketed for a lewd act and had his truck towed. The woman involved was cited as well. Last night, Ferguson said the whole thing was a misunderstanding and that while he wasn't resigning from the Board of Police Commissioners, he would not be attending meetings. Fast forward to tonight's commission meeting. We as the board are well aware of the reports uh, that has been uh, made regarding um, Mr. Ferguson and then went on to say Ferguson has resigned and they're accepting that resignation. We do so agreeing with his sentiments that this board does not need to be distracted. His colleagues on the board respect his decision. Do you feel that a resignation at this point was really the only way forward? Uh, of course. I mean, when you, I, I really admire uh, the fact that he did just that. I think it was the right thing to do. That was his way of handling the situation for the board, for the public trust, because that's what it boils down to. Back here live, all this means is that there is now a vacancy on the board. The mayor has the ability to appoint a replacement. We're live downtown tonight at Detroit Police Headquarters. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. It's been some kind of 24 hours. All right, Mara. Wayne County Sheriff's Department is helping Detroit Police Department crack down in high crime areas. As police tackle the violent crime, the deputies are looking to enforce everyday violations that also matter to the community. Jacqueline Francis did a ride along today where they got to see some action firsthand. Jacqueline. Yeah, that was a bit unexpected, but with ride alongs, you never know what's in store. Today, we were on traffic patrol with a sheriff's sergeant when suddenly we got called to respond to a chase in progress. Officers were on the move, on foot and by car. They were after six suspects. Uh, all units just went uh, eastbound on people. Following a chase that ended in a crash. This was just part of our ride along. I have one Michigan file to run when you're ready. With Wayne County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office was dispatched to support Detroit police with the situation. According to DPD, the car they pursued was wanted in connection to a non-deadly shooting. All six people in the car, four kids and two adults, were taken into custody and the investigation is ongoing. As long as we're out here to show that we're a force together, maybe that changes the mind of those who are attempting to bring down the quality of life in our community. Sheriff Raphael Washington says they're always happy to help their law enforcement partners. And we're stronger together, we're better together. And when we come together to help each other, we're able to best serve the community. The sheriff's team invited us to ride along to see the partnership in action. The initiative focuses on getting deputies to patrol high crime areas in Detroit, focusing on quality of life issues that officers may not otherwise have time to enforce. Have a motor scooter, no plate. Like driving a vehicle sure not approved right. for the road. And I'm stopping because one, you don't have a plate on here. You know you're supposed to have a plate, right? Uh, just quality of life things, drag racers and drifters. Those are some things that law-abiding citizens in the community, they want to see addressed. The sheriff's office has a team set out on these operations about every two weeks. Reporting live in Midtown, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. Michigan's attorney general is taking control of the state charges against the man accused of kidnapping and killing little two-year-old Winter Cole Smith. Rashad Trice made a virtual appearance in an Ingham County courtroom today facing several felony charges there. He also faces federal counts in Winter's kidnapping and several state charges, 
all linked to an attack on her mother in Lansing. And today, Attorney General Dana Nestle announced her office will consolidate the local charges against Trice into one trial. Harper Woods Police investigating a double shooting that left one man dead and another injured. It happened around 9 this morning at Kelly and Kenosha. A 37-year-old man died at the scene. A 25-year-old man is stable. Police say the suspect is a man who may have been wearing a ski mask and drove off in a newer model black Dodge Charger with tinted windows. We're told that car may have been spray painted. In a local four update, a Birmingham art dealer pleads guilty in a case of stolen art. Last October, our cameras were there when the FBI raided the home of Wendy Halstead Beard. She owned an art gallery in Birmingham. Federal prosecutors say Halstead Beard took expensive photos and prints on consignment, sold them, and then pocketed the cash. According to a federal complaint, the 58-year-old defrauded more than 10 customers who entrusted her to sell more than one and a half million dollars worth of art. She faces 20 years in prison. The Food and Drug Administration approves the first ever over-the-counter birth control pill here in the United States. The oral contraception O pill will be available without a prescription at drug stores, grocery stores, and online. The FDA says when used as directed, the daily pill is safe and is expected to be more effective than other non prescription contraceptive methods. The company says a suggested retail price will be announced this fall. Contract negotiations begin tomorrow between the United Auto Workers and Ford Motor Company. Today, the UAW started talks with Stellantis. New UAW President Sean Fain promising a more aggressive style, looking to recover previous union concessions. Automakers want to control costs as they move toward an emissions-free future. The union will begin talks with General Motors next week. Usually these talks would have started with that famous handshake. Sean Fain said he'll shake hands when there's a deal on the table. That's right. We'll be following that. Well, a special event taking place tonight in Oakland County to honor military men and women. Salute Our Warriors was held at the Danny Kassab Estate in Rochester Hills. The event honors military veterans and active service members while raising money for a nonprofit, the Fallen and Wounded Soldiers Fund. Tonight, five military heroes were honored, including a man from Centerline, who's been walking more than 1,500 miles from Florida to Michigan for 60 to in 60 days to raise money for the nonprofit. And today, he finished his walk. Amazing. So impressive. All right, a calmer night across Metro Detroit, mm -hmm. but uh, all that's going to change. It was kind of rumbly about this time last night, wasn't it, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, and it stayed that way. That tornado watch stayed up until 3 a.m., but tonight it's nice and quiet. But we have a chance for severe weather tomorrow. Once again, we're in a marginal risk. That's the lowest threat level, but it doesn't mean we can't see some severe weather tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And then on Saturday, we are also in a marginal risk for severe weather. Let's talk about tomorrow first. The main threats from severe weather would be high winds over 60 miles per hour. That's the threshold to become severe. Also large hail and the possibility of some flooding. Saturday, also a possibility of some high winds, large hail and heavy rain, low chance of tornadoes. Tomorrow's timing of the strong thunderstorms will be in the afternoon and into the evening hours. So your morning commutes totally fine, 67 degrees. You'll notice the humidity going up throughout the morning hours. We'll get to 84 by 2 o'clock and top out at 86 degrees with the possibility of strong showers and thunderstorms. Now, Saturday's timing of the severe weather is different from tomorrow and I'll time that out for you in just a couple of minutes.